This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com, purveyors of quality joysticks for all of your retro kit, joysticks, adapters, arcade control parts, and more. Check them out at MonsterJoysticks.com, and we thank them for supporting the cave. Hello cave dwellers, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the cave. Uh, an odd question you might be thinking that I'm asking today, which is what next for the cave? And I want to reassure you from the start of this video, this is not some kind of drama video. Uh, I haven't got any horrible news to share with you. And I'm not gonna ask you for anything other than ideas and suggestions to try and help what is potentially a huge opportunity to work. And, and I'll explain what that opportunity is. But first of all, you're probably asking why I'm asking this question, given where we are right now today, which is we've got the YouTube channel, um, the successful YouTube channel. We've got the um, exhibition space open now, born out of the YouTube channel with your help. Uh, here it is, we'll just pan around a little bit now. And by the way, I've just put some like 360 degree videos on the second channel uh, in the retro shop and in the hands-on area where you can click and spin around and, and have a look around the cave. So I'll put some links in the video if you want to check those out, they're quite fun. So we recently opened this up to the public, as you know, it's been really popular every weekend, pretty much sold out every weekend and uh, people are enjoying it and loving it. So you might be asking, why isn't my focus 100% now on just running this space? Well, I am, and I'm really working on this being successful in the long term. I really want it to be, so as many people as possible can enjoy it. And uh, at the same time, I'm working really hard with Mark and Dean, who are the, the rest of the team that run the exhibition space here, so that actually I can step back a little bit, safe in the knowledge that everything is running well here, and focus on the YouTube channel, which is what you, the wider audience, want from me. You want quality videos from me, regardless of what's happening here, and this supplements those videos, and I understand that, and, and, uh, and I'm working on that. But um, I'm a great believer in, in, I guess, two things, which hopefully you've seen displayed on the channel over the years, since five years ago, when we put the first proper videos out on the channel. Um, and those are quite simple things. One is that success breeds success. Um, quite an obvious thing to say, but the more successful you are, the more opportunities come your way, which is kind of how we ended up in this space in the first place. After the first three years of success on the YouTube channel, uh, we'll just step outside now, we ended up in this space, in this mill, this beautiful location that's so well suited to what we want to do. It just stuns people that when they come and visit. Even before they arrive here, they love driving through the Cotswolds which is this area of outstanding natural beauty. And then you come down a hill and you see this mill and it's just an amazing sight. And then hopefully we give you that feeling again when you come inside and you see the site of all the retro and everything that we've set up in here. You can see out the front of the mill here, you've got the mill pond, uh, which has a resident heron. Apparently there are otters that come and go. I've not seen them yet. It's, it's just such a picturesque place. And when you come and visit, you drive into the back car park, and this is important, and I'll explain to you why. You drive in here, and in front of you, you have the pump house, or, or the garage, but it used to be a pump house, um, which is just used for storage at the moment. And as we spin around and look back at the mill, you can see it in its entirety from this angle. You've got two wings. You've got the east wing and the west wing on the right-hand side. That's the west wing. And I'm going to try and use some effects here to highlight the cave right at the top. And it's at this point where you post a comment saying, you can't have a cave up there, a cave should be underground. Well, I counter that by saying that you have caves up on Everest. So I'm perfectly entitled to have a cave up high and I will always maintain that position. Thank you very much. That's where the cave is, up there. Now the rest of the building is owned by a company called Heber. Um, Richard is one of the directors who you've seen on the MMS videos. He's this crazy inventor who comes up with a wild and amazing ideas, uh, runs the 3D print farm. Uh, just a really nice guy who's into retro as well. And um, I've been talking to him recently um, about all sorts of things, including the effects that the pandemic had on Heber. So Heber have been and continue to be a very successful company in what they do, but they've changed the way they work a little bit because of the pandemic, as so many companies have. They've embraced working from home and they found that a lot of their engineers are much more effective in working from home where they're free from all the distractions of people just popping into the office and saying, can you just help me with this? Or can you just look at that? They're just totally focused in their home offices working. And they've decided in the longer term, that's probably a better way to work for them. Of course, it does then mean they have this massive mill and fewer employees in there. So there's an opportunity to use that space. And that's where the second 
I guess, principle of the channel uh, comes in. The first one was success breeds success. Therefore, an opportunity has come forward off the back of the success we've had so far. And the second one is a success shared creates more success for more people. And in return, everyone benefits, including you. I, I, I don't believe in, let's use the exhibition here as an example. There are many computer exhibitions and museums. The nearest one to here is, I guess, the Swindon Computer Museum. And I always encourage people to go and visit it and tell people how great it is. Same too with the Leicester Retro Computer Museum, with Cambridge, with the one at Fletchley Park, with all of them. Because A, they're brilliant places to go and visit, and B, the more people enjoy these things, the more they want to enjoy it and they want more experiences, or they want to go back to them, or they want to go and visit other ones. And people who go and visit there will want to come and visit here. And that's a shared success that everyone enjoys. And they tell their friends, so more people go and visit. You get the idea. Um, so instead of, instead of treating um, people as competitors, uh, instead of thinking people might be stepping on my toes or any of that business, I, I don't subscribe to any of that. So this comes on to the opportunity where I need your ideas and I'll tell you what it's all about. Let's step outside again. We're in the car park here. We're looking at the main building. And what I'm about to tell you also includes the pump house, the garage that was behind us. We've got my cave at the top there. Heber in their new configuration with their engineers being all efficient working from home, only really now need to use the east wing. They only need this space. It's got everything they need, which frees up this west wing. Three floors plus the garage of essentially empty space. I want you to use your imaginations here, work with me. What if you drove into that car park knowing you're coming to visit the cave? And before you get to that cave, you've got three floors, an entire west wing of retro and all kinds of retro. And this is where I'm asking for your ideas. What would you want to see there before you got to the cave and when you exit the cave and you come back through there? Because what we want to create is a retro wonderland where we are helping other big people, other companies, and Heber have a history of helping to bootstrap um, startup companies usually in the electronics realm, but they're very open-minded and very into retro. What if we could find companies to partner with who could take up that space and offer a really amazing retro experience, whether it be a cafe, whether it be, I don't know, a retro game shop, um, whether it be whatever ideas you're coming up with, because I'm asking you now, what would you want to see in that space? Uh, we could have one thing per floor, we could divide the floors and have lots of different things to enjoy. And then you go up to the cave and enjoy it. And then you come back and enjoy the rest of this space. We've got a real opportunity here to create this incredible retro destination that has everything you could ever possibly want. So um, I'm asking you now, and I'm gonna give you a tour of the space now to give you an idea of how much we're working with, how much space we're working with. And I'm asking you now, as you watch it, to just post comments down below as to what you'd like to see. Or maybe you run a retro game shop or a, a cafe and, and you have an interest in retro and you want to talk to us or you know someone that you want to suggest we talk to, I've put an email address in the video description. So just drop us a message and we're, we're looking to talk to anyone and everyone and show them around and figure out how we can make this work to create an amazing retro destination. Let's take a look around. We'll start on the ground floor. So this is by no means necessarily the entrance to it because we've got other doors out on the front here. But currently when you visit the cave, you walk through this archway, which is where the water wheel used to be located originally. Um, you would go left to go up the stairs to get into the cave, but instead we're gonna go right into the west wing. And the first room we're gonna go into is on the ground floor. And this is, well, you can see as we go inside, it's effectively a storeroom um, filled with all sorts of junk. Now, we're not expecting people to come in and say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll clear that out and we'll invest money in um, preparing this space. Heber are very open-minded and prepared to, to, of course, clear all their stuff out of the space, but also prepare the space as a blank canvas for whatever you need it to, to be. Of course, whatever you put in here, you might want to theme it in the way that you want to, but you need a good blank slate. You need nicely clean plastered walls, walls and, um, you know, good lighting and um, airflow and, and everything else to make it a nice space and then you can do what you want with it. So there's help on that front. There's also, um, we'll just walk through here to show you around. If you go to the back of the room here, there's actually a pool table that needs to be gotten rid of. 
if anyone needs a full-size um, pub quality uh, pool table, let us know because we need to shift that and remnants of old fruit machines that Heber used to work on. This is all going to be cleared out. And because this is kind of a ground floor storage room at the moment, what Heber um, are costing up as an option is to knock through the ceiling and create a nice staircase and also let some more light into here so that this can become more of a space that can flow up to the next floor. So this is floor one. What would you want to see on floor one of your retro heaven, I ask you? Um, my instinct suggests perhaps um, a cafe of some sort where you could get um, a substantial meal. We've got a tuck shop up in the cave. And of course, it's uh, my responsibility not to create a conflict of interest in what we're doing up in the cave with other businesses that might open here. So we've got a tuck shop in the cave. That's not going to conflict with a cafe that's serving, you know, good full cooked meals that people might want. Um, if they come to the cave for a day, they might want to pop down and, and have a full meal in the cafe here. Why not? Would you want to see that? Could the cafe be retro themed perhaps? Um, perhaps it could have modern mini retro systems down here and flat screens so you could eat something and play some games, but then you'd come up to the cave if you want the real authentic experience with the real hardware and the CRTs. That's an option. So. Um, let us know your thoughts. What would you want to see down here? Um, and then you would come up to the next floor. So possibly with the staircase knocked through, but we'll, we'll come into this floor here. This space was Heber's employees' um, space to enjoy. You know, they've got an astroturfed floor here and a dartboard and all sorts was going on up here, but the pandemic hit and, and it fell out of use. So it's a pretty empty space. Again, it can be um, stripped back, turned into a blank canvas for whatever you might want to see here. Again, I'm asking for your ideas. What, what would fit in here? Um, some of the ideas I've had are a retro game and hardware shop. I'd love to see that, especially if it was a shop that did microcomputers, games and hardware as well, because I know a lot of the shops stick primarily to console gaming, probably because cartridges are just more reliable and easier to work with and test and all of that stuff. But there are some video game shops, um, Super Tomato in Cardiff, for example, that I love to go to. The two big box Atari and Amiga games and Amstrad CPC and Spectrum games. And that's more in keeping with what happens up in the cave here. So it would be nice to see that kind of shop. Would you like to see that? Um, it's quite a big space to fill with just that. And also I imagine with this turning into what it's turning into potentially, it's a visitor attraction. It's not a shopping center. It's a visitor attraction. So you're going to have footfall that peaks and troughs through the week. You're probably going to have very busy weekends, uh, maybe a quieter Monday, Tuesday. So if you had a retro video game shop that um, had an online business as well, they could use those quieter days to pack and ship and be a full-time business despite a lower footfall. I don't know. Or maybe we could generate the footfall because when you have such a specialist shop like that, people come from far and wide to visit it. So lots of things to think about and to talk about with... Um, potential suitors for the space. We could divide the shop up. We could drift away slightly from retro computers. And what about if you had things like, I don't know, a, a board game or a shop or a board game cafe, tabletop gaming, um, Warhammer stuff. I, I don't know a lot about Warhammer, <laughs> I have to say, but um, you know, it strikes me as the kind of geeky activity that complements uh, retro quite well. We don't want to drift too far off message because um, you want people to be able to come and enjoy all of the space. But you tell me, is that something that you're interested in? I don't know. And then we'll go up to the top floor, which again, the same amount of space as the floors below. This is currently an office, but we cleared out. And this has the potential for all sorts again. Some ideas I have for the top floor are really prompted by what I'm seeing happen in the cave on the open days at the weekend now. One of the most valuable things that I see people take pride in is coming here and not just playing the games, but feeling like they've learned something. Education is such an important aspect of a visitor experience here. And we have Mark telling people all about the tabletop games in the corner, his collection of tabletop games, taking them apart. Um, we have myself at the table here, or sometimes we have Rob taking apart CRTs and giving tips. This weekend coming at the patron um, special day, we've got Mark fixes stuff. He's going to be fixing, um, I think he's got a 3DO planned that he wants to fix on the table here. So people will be able to watch that and people 
you know, learn and chat and get to ask questions in a relaxed environment to him and go away feeling like they've learned something. Which has got me thinking about this top floor here. What about a maker space or um, a maker space slash meeting room where you could have um, talks? Perhaps you could have a talk in the cave from an old game dev talking about their gaming history in general. And then in the afternoon, they might move into something like uh, a crash course in assembly language programming for the Atari ST, something like that, you know, to give people that extra educational experience and make people um, go away feeling like they've learned something and feeling like they've got something of value from the visit. And then going down and having something in the cafe. You know, you see how the, I'm trying to think of complementary services that all tie together and make you feel good about yourself and make you want to come here. So that's the opportunity um, as it presents itself and some of my ideas, but the floor is open. Tell me everything that you're thinking. Tell me that you think I'm insane and this is the most ridiculous idea ever. Um, tell me what kind of businesses you'd like to see in there. I'd like to reassure you, by the way, that this is all done in collaboration with Heba and with potential businesses who are interested in taking part. And with the focus very much at the forefront of my mind of not adding risk to RMC or the cave itself. If this doesn't work out, if this opportunity doesn't come to fruition, it's not something where I'm putting myself in a position where it's going to bankrupt me and make the channel disappear or make the cave close or anything like that. That's all a completely separate business. And this is a new opportunity as an aside that may or may not work out, but I'd love to make it work out. And I'd love to, for, for you guys to um, come on the, the journey of making that work, just as you have done on the journey of building the cave and getting us to this point. We've done this, we've proven that we can do this together. Just imagine what we can do with the rest of that space, that whole West Wing. It could be retro heaven and I hope we can make it happen. I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts and your emails. Uh, let's just take one more look outside at what we've got to work with here. And hopefully looking at it, it excites you as much as it does me as to what we could potentially create here. And all of those extra spaces could very much become part of the YouTube channel for those who can't come here. We could have so many people with additional expertise, game collectors, repairers, makers, who can become part and parcel of the channel to give us content for you to enjoy and to help promote their businesses and what they do here. It could be a really wonderful collective. Let us know your thoughts. And um, while I've got your attention here, by the way, I, I don't often do this, so I just give a shout out to some of these things here that you can do. Um, you may or may not know that I'm on social media, on Twitter. You might like to follow me on twitter.com forward slash RMC Retro. In fact, all of the social medias, just put forward slash RMC Retro. You'll find me on Instagram. You'll find me on Facebook. I think I'm even on TikTok, but not a lot happens over there. So go and give me a follow on those channels. There's also the second RMC channel where you can find weird and wonderful things such as those 360 degree tours. And if you really love what we do and you want to support it, then head over to patreon.com forward slash RMC Retro where you can become an official cave dweller. You can help us to fund what we're doing. And you can also um, get access to those patron only special days and other fun early access videos and ad free videos and all of that stuff. Thank you as always for your kind support and your encouragement and for getting us to where we are now. We did this in a little over a year, the cave. Imagine where the hell we might be in another year with this opportunity in front of us. Wow, wow. Let's see what happens next. Thanks everyone, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.